The defocus curve is the best way to assess the performance of presbyopia correcting IOLs. Its construct is such that it enables us to evaluate the range of vision while seated at the usual distance of 6 meters from the Snellen's chart. This is because it is no longer enough merely to check the distance and near visual acuity or the contrast sensitivity in order to assess the performance of the EDOF multifocal or trifocal lenses. To actually find out if these lenses deliver on their promises, we need to test the post-operative range of vision. Let me show you a simple way of doing this. But first, let me tell you how it is not to be done and what we don't want to do is to make the patient either walk towards the Snellen's chart to measure the visual acuity or likewise move the chart towards the patient. Now these methods will not work because moving a chart closer will increase the magnification factor and change the angle subtended at the nodal point and hence the measured acuity will be inaccurate. Alternatively, we could use a series of reduced Snellen's charts for various distances. While this would be uh, more accurate, it also becomes a lot cumbersome. And hence, there must be a simple method of doing this, which is what I will explain to you. But before I do that, let's assimilate a few facts. Fact number one, after cataract surgery, be it a fakia or pseudophakia, the accommodative range and amplitude essentially becomes zero. Although some claim that pseudo accommodation can exist with monofocal IOLs, this is seldom more than 0.5 to 1 diopter as confirmed by elegant studies conducted by Dr. Nishi et al. and is present only in a small percentage of patients. Dr. Nishi also noted that this is more common um, in uh, patients with non-aspheric than uh, in patients who have received aspheric IOLs. So let's get to how we can test the range of vision and this is how we start. Now the patient is seated in front of the Snellen's chart at 6 meters wearing his distance correction. We then place a minus 1 diopterspherical lens in front of the eye of the patient. And because the accommodation is zero because the patient is pseudophakic, this should cause a blurring or a drop in the visual acuity. If the patient continues to see the 6x6 line clearly, this is because the intraocular lens has somehow contributed to this effect by accommodating by one diopter. Or in other words, it uh, behaves like it possesses a plus one diopter add. How can we now translate this information into actual distance or range? In order to understand this, we need to jog up our memory a bit with this formula that states that f is equal to 1 by d, where f is the focal length in meters and d is the power in diopters. And by using this formula, we understand that a person with a one diopter of accommodation can see clearly at a distance of one meter, which means that by placing a minus one diopter spherical lens, we force or we stimulate a one diopter of accommodation in the patient and therefore we are essentially and effectively checking the visual acuity at a distance of one meter. Now this is the fundamental principle uh, of how a defocus curve works. For the same reason, placing a minus 2 diopter lens in front of the eye will enable us to test the visual performance at a distance of 50 centimeters and so on. Now this is the basic refractive principle on which the defocus curve works. Now all the data that we uh, get can be represented in the form of a graph. Now in order to plot the curve, we first draw up a template in which um, the vertical axis displays the visual acuity uh, from 6 by 6 at the top 
to about 660 at the bottom. The horizontal axis plots the negative spherical add gradually from say plus 1 to plus 0.5 to no add to minus 0.5, minus 1 diopter and so on and so forth till we reach minus 4 diopters. Now this add is done in 0.5 diopter steps. The negative dioptric add can be taken to represent the varying testing distances as already discussed. Therefore, a minus 0.5 diopter add tests the visual performance at a distance of 2 meters whereas a minus 1 diopter add tests the visual performance at 1 meter. A minus 2 diopter add represents a testing distance of 50 centimeters, minus 3 diopter add 33 centimeters, minus 4 at 25 centimeters and so on. Now this can be easily drawn by using a sheet of paper and a pencil and scale. We are now ready to plot the defocus curve. Make the patient sit at the usual 6 meter distance from the Snellens chart, varying his or her distance correction. Now progressively keep adding minus diopter lenses and document the visual acuity. Plot this on the chart. The plus lenses have been added to just round up the curve and is strictly not necessary. The defocus curve may be plotted uniocularly or binocularly. It can be performed in FACIX to demonstrate the range and amplitude of accommodation, but its real value lies in understanding the range of vision provided by the presbyopia correcting IOLs. This is the defocus curve of a 22-year-old patient who was my optometrist. I generally use the FACIX defocus curves to explain to the patient who has received presbyopic correcting IOLs, how his or her post-operative range of vision has improved, say compared to a 20 or 30 year old fakic emetropic patient with no cataract. Sometimes with bilateral EDOF lenses with monovision adjustments or bilateral trifocal intraocular lens implantations, I have achieved a similar defocus curve in, some, in my 60 plus cataract patients also. When reading a defocus curve plot, pay attention to the height of the curve at three zones. The distance zone corresponding to the zero at, the intermediate zone between 50 to 60 centimeters or between 1.5, uh, minus 1.5 and minus 2.0 at, and the near zone between 30 to 40 centimeters or between the minus 3 to minus 2.5 add. The higher the curve, the better the visual acuity and vice versa. This is how a defocus curve looks in a 55 plus fakic patient whose amplitude of accommodation is down to say 1 or 1.5 diopters. Now what you see in this curve is that it shows good visual performance for distance a poor visual performance for intermediate vision and extremely poor performance for near vision. Incidentally, uh, this is my own binocular defocus curve plot. Now, let us compare this with a binocular defocus plot in a patient who has received a monofocal IOL implantation. Well, it looks pretty much similar to the previous one which is a, a plot which is done in a 55 year old fakic patient. Good distance but poor intermediate and very poor near visual outcome. Now this patient will definitely need to wear progressive glasses at least 80% of the time if not constantly. Look at this defocus uh, plot. This is the defocus plot of a patient with a monofocal IOL in the left eye and a symphony extended depth of focus lens in the right eye. So this plot is that of the symphony, this plot is that of the monofocal lens. The extended depth of lens shows much better visual performance in the intermediate zone, this is the intermediate zone, but still a poor function for near, however it is better than a monofocal lens. However in these patients, if we actually aim for a monovision 
of minus 0.75 to minus 1 diopter of myopia in the non-dominant eye. Then the binocular defocus curve in these patients looks much better and could be comparable to a defocus curve in a fakic patient of 30 to 40, the fakic patient who is about 30 to 40 years of age. There are two defocus curves seen um, in this uh, slide. The defocus curve on the top left corner was plotted in a patient who received bilateral multifocal IOL implantations. You know that bilateral uh, multifocal actually means uh, bifocal IOLs. Now the curve actually shows a classical double hump pattern. There's a good uh, vision for distance, a good vision for uh, near and poor intermediate vision. And the lower curve is that of a bilaterally implanted indigenous extended depth of focus IOL. I think it's the in focus uh, intraocular lens. Now in this plot we see that the patient has a very good distance and intermediate vision and a fair amount of visual performance for near. The extended depth of focus lenses have the additional advantage in that they also exhibit lesser glare and other photic phenomena when compared to multifocal or trifocal IOLs. But the main carry home message is that for those of you who are implanting presbyopia correcting IOLs, it is not enough to just test the visual acuity for distance and near. For example, an unaided uh, 6x6 N6 vision with multifocal IOL implant may actually result in an unhappy patient who has a compromised intermediate range of vision, while an uncorrected 6x6 for distance and N10 vision for near in one who has received an extended depth of focus lens will, with good intermediate vision and a fair amount of near vision may actually lead to a happy satisfied patient. Since the best way of knowing something is to find out for yourself, I suggest that you start plotting the defocus curves so that you can understand how well your patients are really seeing. Thank you for your attention.